Hey guys, John V here from Phone Arena. Right now you're watching our in-depth video review of the Acer Konya Tab A200. It's a 10.1 inch honeycomb tablet, slightly tweaked version of the A500, sporting similar specs, a different body, and an updated uh, interface. And it's priced modestly at $330 for the 8GB version. Now we have to say that the A200 is just a better looking tablet versus the A500, although it doesn't really break any grams compared to other tablets out there in the market. This time around it just feels like a lot more sturdier feeling tablet, it doesn't feel as cheap, and we also like the fact that it sports this rubbery textured back cover, which gives it a clean look, and on top of that, you know, a good grip in the hand, but there's still a fair, fair amount of weight with this guy. There's nothing really fancy about its display. It's actually the same as before. It's a 10.1 inch panel, standard LCD panel, and it has a resolution of 1280 by 800 pixels, which is pretty good for, of course, a display of this size. So you still get some nice details with fine text, very legible here. And on top of that, seeing that it is an LCD panel, it produces some neutral looking colors, nothing overly saturated, but it's poor viewing angles and it's weak brightness output makes it very difficult to view in outdoor conditions. Part of the reason why the Acer Konya Tab A200 is priced so low is the fact that it only offers one camera. It's this uh, front-facing 2 megapixel one. You can do video chat and take self-portraits, but there is no rear camera. Most of the tablet's ports and buttons are found on the left edge. You have a dedicated power button, good distinctive feel. It also incorporates an LED light for the notification system. You have a 3.5mm headset jack, micro USB port for data connectivity, a full-size USB port so you connect things like a flash drive and other peripherals to it. And behind this plastic flap, which is notoriously difficult to remove, you have the micro SD card slot and also the manual reset button. Meanwhile, on top edge, you have the volume rocker, which has a very stiff feel to it, the orientation lock, and you also have a microphone. The proprietary charging port is found on the right edge, and it's the only way you can charge the tablet. Flipping it over, the only thing you find in the rear is just the Acer logo and the left and right speakers, and that's pretty much it. Out of the box, the Acer Konya Tab A200 is running Android 3.2.1 Honeycomb, so no ice cream sandwich. Initially, it looks like a stock honeycomb experience, but there is a little bit of a tweak going on. You can tell with the uh, widget right here, with the clock and weather, um, and also some of the menu icons here. But for the most part, it looks like just like any other honeycomb tablet on the market. But if you turn it on, turn it off, and get to the lock screen, it looks familiar at first, but it's actually the Acer ring on here. It gives you quick access to certain functions, which you could pre which is nice, or you can lock, unlock the tablet altogether. Also, you notice there's this dot right here at the bottom. You press that, it gains, you gain access to the Acer ring, which is a pre pretty nifty looking interface here. On the right side, you have access to your bookmarks, volume controls on the left, and you have these four preset items you could, you could uh, change in the settings. Another thing, it gives you even a screenshot setting, which is pretty nice. And overall, you know, it's a nice customization and uh, it works well, uh, but doesn't really um, you know, drastically uh, go beyond the stock experience. Powered by a dual-core 1GHz NVIDIA Tegra 2 processor coupled with 1GB RAM, it's pretty much the same thing we, find, we found with the first-generation Honeycomb tablet. So for stuff like a static wallpaper and navigating across the home screen, it's very instantaneous and responsive. As far as other basic tasks, you know, uh, pinch zooming, launching applications, pretty good. But if you test it out with something a little bit more processor intensive, for example, live wallpaper, um, it does. you do begin to see uh, some levels of choppiness, and it's pretty prevalent, actually. Actually, it's not able to track our finger as well as before, but that's pretty much typical of uh, you know the uh, uh, Nvidia Tegra 2 uh, uh, tablets we've seen in the past. With its 10.1 inch display, typing out a message is not a problem just because the layout is very ample. You can tell here and on top of that, also responsive. So if you type really fast, it's able to keep up and we didn't have any issues typing up any messages. Web browsing isn't too much of a problem with the tablet just because you get flash support so you get that desktop like experience and for the most part it is very tolerable. You can tell with pinch gestures it's pretty instantaneous but at other times we notice some delays with its movement and does have some issues as far as rendering sometimes but it's not a big problem and overall definitely enjoyable to use. Well, there's something new with the music player found on the tablet just because it relies on the stock honeycomb music player which gives it a you know, really nice uh, interface here with the carousel. Uh, but as far as the audio quality with its dual speakers left and right, to tell you the truth, it's very weak in tone, not strong at all, and very hard to, to listen to. So the video we have here, it's encoded in DivX, 1920 by 1080 resolution, so 1080p, so for the most part it runs pretty smoothly, but at times we do notice some choppiness, but with its sizable display and of course natural looking color production, it's still quite pleasurable to actually watch. 
As I mentioned already, the tablet only offers a front-facing camera, which is going to be primarily used for video chat and, of course, an occasional self-portrait. It's not something you're going to use to take photos and videos. Uh, video capture is set at a maximum uh, VGA resolution, so, so that's 640 by 480. As far as the quality of both uh, still images, it's a little bit on the grainy side, inaccurate color, so it's not spectacular. At the same time, video quality is not that great, too. You get some uh, very distorted-sounding uh, audio recording and on top of that, not that much detail. With its Wi-Fi connection, we're pretty content with the overall signal strength. We're able to use it roughly 30 feet away from a Wi-Fi hotspot, so it's more than sufficient and doesn't seem to fluctuate at all. Packing a 3260 milliamp hour battery inside its body, we're pretty content with the battery life offered by the A200. Um, after full charge, uh, setting the brightness manual to the middle setting, uh, we're able to get roughly a good day's worth of usage. By the end of the day, it was at the 50% mark, so obviously you could probably get close to two days of normal usage out of it, which is more than adequate. Clearly, the Acer Kony Tab A200 isn't the most cutting-edge tablet out there in the market. It does offer some minor tweaks over the A500, and we actually like it, especially considering the price. Starts off at $330 for the 8GB version. This one here is a 16GB at $350. You can always supplement its uh, memory capacity by the uh, SD card slot, so you have that option available to you. But still lacks some other features that are found on other tablets, such as a rear-facing camera and ability to have video out functionality. You don't have that on this guy, but for $330, it definitely you know, is a good appealing price point, especially for a 10.1 inch tablet. And you know, people, you're going to need a little bit of patience just because the performance might not be the most responsive at times. It could be inconsistent, but nevertheless, you have the full offering of pretty much a honeycomb tablet at your disposal. So if you'd like to learn more about the Acer Iconia Tab A200, check out our website, guys, phonereno.com. This is John V. Thanks for watching.